Hi girls, welcome back to another virtual treat meeting. Today we're gonna to be tackling space science part two. So if you didn't catch part one, don't worry, press pause, go and watch part one and then come back and join us. So last time we talked about constellations. Now if you could, in the comments down below, tell me your favorite constellation you found and your name, your troop number and where you're watching from. My name is Rachel Vara. I'm the STEM Program and Curriculum Coordinator for Girl Scouts of Southwest Texas. And I live in San Antonio. We're gonna start our virtual troop meeting the same way we would our in-person meetings, with the Pledge of Allegiance and the Girl Scout Promise. So let's get started with our pledge first. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great job, girls. Now let's move on to our promise. And I got our promise right here. It's written in um, English and in Spanish. So you can choose to say your promise in whichever language you choose. I'm gonna start mine up here with English. So, on my honor, I will try to serve God and my country to help people at all times and to live by the Girl Scout law. Today we'll be working on our space science badge. So, by the end of this activity, Brownies will have completed step four, be a stargazer, and Juniors will have completed their step four, use tools to explore. Now, before we get started, let's review what we learned last time. In part one, we learned what constellations were. Does anyone remember? This little one right here might help you out. Does anyone remember what this one's name was? Well, this was Orion, and if you said that constellations were groups of stars in the sky that form shapes, then you'd be correct. Now, does anyone remember how many official constellations I said there were? Hmm? You can comment down below. I wanna know all the things you guys remember. Um, if you said 88, that's correct. So the, astro the International Astronomical Union designated 88 official constellations. Good job, girls. Now, what did you find on your night sky scavenger hunt? Did anyone actually go out and do it? Um, if you did, make sure you tell me down below some of the things you found, love to know. And don't forget to include your name, your troop number, and then where you're watching from, too. Now, if you had trouble trying to identify constellations, maybe it was too bright, or you went to bed before it got dark. Um, we're gonna do something today, our activities today are going to help solve that problem. So we've got two different types of tools that are gonna help you be able to see the stars in your house and then also help you identify them outside. So let's get started. Our first activity today, we're gonna make a constellation viewer. So let's grab our supplies. You're going to need some Dixie cups, a flashlight, push pins or thumbtacks, your circular constellation cutouts, and scissors. Okay, girls, so the first thing we're gonna do is take one of our Dixie cups How many should we do? Let's do three, okay? Um, we'll get started with our friend Orion. So if you find Orion, we're gonna just cut out the circle. Now, if you can't print these out, not to worry. What you can do is look at them and then draw the dots onto the bottom of your cup using um, a pen or a marker. And then you can use that as a template to follow instead of this. So we'll set it on the bottom of our cup, just like so. And then you're going to take your push pin. Now be careful, because these are pointy. And you're gonna hold it down. You don't need to glue it or tape it, it it'll stay still. And on all of these circles, they have black dots or little black stars. 
that's where you're going to be pushing the push pin through. Okay, so let's do it together. I'm gonna do a Ryan, and it doesn't matter direction, just in, so all the way in, and then you'll pull it out and you're just gonna follow. It's almost like connect the dots, but you're doing the dots instead of the connecting lines. So we'll take our paper, we don't need him anymore. And then at the end, you should have, I don't know if you can see, <laughs> um, the dots made out. So let's do two more, and then we'll actually get to test these out, okay? So pick any two that you want. I am going to do Scorpius. Let's see. So the Scorpius one right here, I'm gonna do that one. You, in honor of our Orion myth from part one, does anyone remember how Orion and, and Scorpius got into the stars? Do you remember? So, remember Scorpius was sent down to teach Orion a lesson because Orion boasted that he could defeat any creature in the world. And remember, the earth goddess was very upset by this. And so she sent a giant scorpion down to teach him a lesson. And so they battled. And unfortunately for Orion, he lost. Um, but Scorpius was victorious. And Zeus, remember Zeus, the king of all the gods and the Olympians? He was so entertained by their battle, he rewarded Scorpion by adding him to the stars and he became the constellation Scorpius. Now, how did, and then Orion got added when Artemis, who was the goddess of the hunt, pleaded with Zeus to also honor our friend Orion the same way. And he did, he granted her request. And so Orion and Scorpius are both in the sky, but they're far away from each other. So it kind of, as the earth rotates, it always looks like <laughs> uh, Scorpius is still chasing Orion. So now we have our three. I've got my bonus one, I'm not gonna tell you because I wanna see if you can guess when we go. Um, Scorpius and Orion. So we don't need our extra cups, we can put those over there. You can do as many of these as you want. If you wanna do the whole sheet, go for it. I'd love to see what you can do. Um, the next step is we're gonna take our cups and our flashlight and we're gonna go to a room in our house where it can get really, really dark. So for me, that's gonna be the bathroom. It's usually a place where there's no windows, um, where it can get very dark, so a closet, or the bathroom is the best place. So we're gonna go in the bathroom and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna shine our constellations onto the wall so that you can always see the constellations and anyone that you wanna see anytime. Okay, it doesn't have to be dark, um, and you don't have to worry about it being a cloudy uh, night and miss those constellations because you'll have them right in your home. So before we go, let's make sure we clean up our space because we want to be ready for our next activity when we get back. And remember, Girl Scouts always leave a place cleaner than they found it. So I'm going to take my cutouts and place them in my bin, my scissors, the remainder of my papers my push pins, and I have mine in some cardboard so that I don't poke myself, the remainder of my cups, and I also wanted to take this time to show you an alternative way to make your constellation viewer. So if you don't have these Dixie cups at home um, or anything like them, you can also use the tube of um, like toilet paper rolls, or I had a paper towel roll, so that's what I use. You can always cut out, take your circle, and tape it onto the end 
Now an important part is, I only had this kind of striped washi tape, um, but any tape will do. So you wanna tape it so that the sides, no light can get through. You only want the light to come through your poked holes. Okay, sounds good. And this will work the same way as our cups, especially um, when we go try it out. So are y'all ready to go try? Okay, let's, I'll meet you in there. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Now that we've turned off the lights and it's nice and dark in our room, we're going to project our constellations. So get your flashlight on so you can see what you're doing. And you're going to place it inside your cup, kind of like this. See how my hands are? See how the flashlight is upwards and it's shining on the side of the cup? It's not directly in the cup. And then I'm just gonna point it to the wall. So look, there's our Scorpius. You can see our Scorpius. Isn't that cool? Now let's try it out with another one of our constellations. Let's see if y'all can guess this one. Anyone remember the name of this particular constellation? If you would say Orion, you're correct. See, in the middle, we've got his three belt stars. Um, this one it, on my cup, I didn't add the bow, so it's just those main stars. But if you'd like to add the bow in the head, you are more than welcome to. Okay, let's try one more and that I didn't go over and see if you can identify it. Okay, can anyone identify this constellation. You may have even chosen to do it. This one actually is Leo. Okay girls, welcome back. So now that we have our space clean and it's ready to work, let's get started on activity number two, creating our own star wheel. So the star wheels are gonna help you to be able to identify constellations, stars, even planets in the sky. Doesn't matter the time of year, if it's daylight savings time or standard time, your wheel will solve all those problems and you'll still be able to see what's in the sky. So let's get started. We're gonna need our supplies, so let me get them. You're going to need our two documents. So these are our two parts of the star wheel. This is the star map, and this is our star, like the outside of our tool, okay? Both of these documents are down below. You're gonna to need to print them out. I did cardstock on mine just so it's a little bit more sturdy, but regular paper is just fine. You can always go um, like layer it or put it behind cardboard sometimes. That'll really stiffen it up. And we're gonna need scissors and our staples. So what I want you to do, girls, is we're going to cut out our map first. So what you're gonna do is just cut the circle out, okay? So all this gray, these gray corners, you're cutting them off. So let's get started. should have two pieces where you've got your circle and then your discarded paper which we're gonna set over here now for the outside I want you to cut along this blue this whole circle is gonna get cut and then down and you'll see it has this black box right here follow the line don't cut this part off you want to cut the outside I'll show you so just follow that black outline right there. 
this is important because this is going to form the flap to hold our star wheel in place. So you want to keep this bottom portion. Now let's finish cutting out the rest. And there you go, we've got it all cut out. Now once you have yours cut out, make sure you discard all your paper, set it to the side, and we're gonna get started building it. So, oh, I forgot one thing, oh no, okay. So, we have to be able to view our circle, our map, inside our star wheel. But in here, this is where we're going to need to cut this out. So for this one, you're gonna, what helps me to cut the circle out is I'll fold it a little bit and then I make kind of like a plus sign. It almost looks like the openings in the tops of um, lids at fast food restaurants where it's like you can stick the straw in there. It makes it a little bit easier to move it around, um, but you try whatever works for you. This is just how I'm gonna do it. And we're gonna cut out this, light, my light blue circle. For you it could be white or whichever color paper you've used. So now you should have a nice big hole right in there. So what we're gonna do next is once we have our two pieces cut out, we don't need our scissors anymore. We're going to fold this portion down to where it's folded along that line where it's dark right there. So kind of make a little flap. And then the next step is you're gonna take your staples. Now if you don't have staples, you can also use tape. Um, just make sure it's kind of strong tape because you wanna make sure this doesn't fold, fold out. Um, it's, it's what is gonna hold our wheel, so it needs to be sturdy. So if you're using staples, on here it has two little lines those are where they'd like you to place the staples, so that's where I'm going to staple it. One. And two. Now I can put my staples to the side, and what you're going to do is take your wheel, and it just sits nicely. Okay girls, so I fixed what was wrong. I would stapled it too tight, so I had to take the staples out and put them back in. Don't worry, if this happens to you, it's very easy. Just kind of peel them off. Um, I even had to rip mine a little bit and it's still okay. Don't worry, your tool will still work. <laughs> so let's take a look at our two items here before we start using it. So if you look at your wheel part, your little map here, this is a map of the night sky. You should be able to see different constellations, 
um, st there are stars that are labeled. So look around, can everyone find the North Star for me? So the North Star is right here in the center. It's our northernmost point. And there's something fun about the North Star that I'll show you once we get to using our star wheel. Um, but you may be able to see some of the constellations we identified last time. Maybe you even find this the constellation you used for your planetarium cup. Um, and what is on the outside? Can anyone observe? tell me what they observe on the outside of the wheel? So, you're correct. There are lots of dates. So we have each month of the year with our dates in, they're in sets of five. Okay, so we can find April, the month that we're in right now. And let's see, that's the star wheel. Now, if we look at the outside portion of our tool, you should be able to see we've got, this is where the horizon is. So the horizon is going to be where the sky meets the earth. Okay, so if you look out and you see where sky ends, that's your horizon. A lot of, if you've ever, a lot of times if you've ever been on a boat um, and you get a little seasick, a lot of times they'll say, look to the horizon because that's always a straight line and you won't see the movement of the boat so much if you look straight out there. Um, so that's kind of, make sure you know where the horizon is when you're looking through your star wheel. Now, around here in yellow, it has facing south, facing west, facing north, and facing east. So when you're using your star wheel, you wanna make sure you're in the correct cardinal direction. So use a compass. A lot of our phones now have apps that have compasses on them. So if you don't have a compass at home, just use your phone um, and wherever you wanna look. So if you wanna look south, make sure your compass tells you which direction south is. So if we were facing south, we'd hold our star wheel up like this, where it's looking at me like that. Now, if I wanted to look facing east, I would turn my star wheel so that facing east is um, it's upward so I can read it. Okay, it's not upside down, it's not left to right, it's right here. So you can see it and you'd hold your star wheel like that. Same thing if you wanted to face north, you'd hold your star wheel like this. And if you were facing west, you'd hold your star wheel like this. Now the outside portion, what do you see? Those are times. So these are the times during the night when you'd be able to see stars. Now it goes from 7 a.m. slash 8 a.m. to about 5 p.m. slash 6 p.m. So 6 p.m. or 5 p.m. is usually the earliest you'll be able to start seeing stars depending on where you are in the country. Um, and then it goes all the way up midnight and then into the early hours of the morning. And usually 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. is the, the last bit of um, darkness you'll have to see the stars. And then after that, you just have to wait for the next night. So it, we do have two different times. The white or the lighter ones are your standard time. So that's when we're not during, doing daylight savings time. We're not observing daylight savings time. So we will not be using <laughs> the white ones right now. When you're using your star wheel during this month, make sure you use the yellow ones. Because if you remember a few weeks back, we sprung forward. So now we are doing daylight savings time. So we've got our, so we're gonna use our yellow. So let's place our star wheel in to the outside. So now you have it complete and you should be able to turn it to whichever date you please. So let's look and see what midnight, um, I'm gonna choose my birthday, okay? So my birthday's coming up, it's April 13th. So let me turn it, what is it gonna look like midnight on April 13th let's see and remember they're not exact days they're in increments of five so you just kind of have to eyeball where um, the the numbers in between are so I'm gonna say this is April 13th if you can see right up there and you can choose any date if you want to do your birthday too and see what the stars would look like on, on that particular date go for it um, but let's all turn to April 13th right now so we can all kind of see the same stuff so this is what we'd be able to see this entire thing just in here now we are missing some right so if you fold it down there's a whole bunch we're not seeing because our stars are seasonal just like um, our trees have cycles where there are different 
um, trees and plants that they bloom seasonally, so maybe they're only in the spring or they're only in the fall. So our stars are the same because they're constantly circling, okay? We're on that orbit. So we're not gonna see all the stars all the time, okay? We're gonna see them seasonally. So in April, which is uh, full spring, let's see. We've got Hercules here. What are some other ones that y'all see? There's a real big one in there you might be able to notice. Uh, Ursa Major, which has our Big Dipper. Now, can everyone find the North Star? Remember I talked about, we uh, earlier we'd say some stuff about the North Star. So here it is. Now, what I want you to do is spin your wheel and notice what is the one thing that doesn't change you see all the time. There are a few constellations you see no matter what time of year it is. So, the North Star, or Polaris, we're always going to see. And that's a part of Ursa Minor, okay? The Little Dipper right in there. But we've got Ursa Major, we always see, let's see, what else do we always see? Draco, anything that's really close to the North Star, you're gonna see year round. So there are some that are seasonal and then there are some that are year round. Um, so what I want you to do tonight is to take your star wheel up, remember your direction, and you can hold it in the sky, find the North Star first. So that's the, the easiest place to start, is you wanna find the Little Dipper. If you need Ursa Major's help, you can. So a trick is if you find Ursa Major, which is the Big Dipper, Look at those two stars that are at the end of the late, like the end of the ladle where the scoop is, and they will form a line and they'll point to the North Star, and that'll help you identify it. And once you find the North Star, you can go from there, and it should be easier to see them outside. So, girls, that's the end of today's video. I hope you had a great time. We always want uh, comments. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'd love to know what you guys are doing at home, what you'd love to see more of. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And the way we end all our in-person troop meetings is with a song, right? Or our friendship circle. But because we're practicing social distancing, we can't do our friendship circle. We're actually going to sing our Make New Friends song. So if everyone's ready, let's sing. Make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver and the other's gold. A circle is round, it has no end. That's how long I want to be your friends. Great girls, now remember, if you had a great time today, make sure to like and share this video with any of your friends who you think would also really enjoy um, doing some space science. And I hope to see you next time. Bye.